Hey, welcome back. I'm David. The Bamboo Lab P1P is a fantastic machine, but for a lot of people trying to figure out which was the perfect machine for them, they had the P1P on one side and the X1 on the other side, and the X1 is a lot more expensive and it's a lot more complex of a machine. But the X1 series gives you an enclosure which allows you to better print things that require higher temperatures. A lot of Bamboo Lab's P1P users were stuck only being able to do things like PLA and PETG, and those are the two things that people are printing most. But when it comes to high temperature filaments, a lot of them had trouble, especially if their printers were in a room that wasn't really warm. Well, the Bamboo Lab P1S changes that. It gives the P1P a full enclosure and it also upgrades the path that the Bowden tube takes in order to come into the extruder, giving it a cable guide to keep those cables from wearing out. There's been a bunch of reviews already about the P1S. I'm going to give you my thoughts about the P1S. I also want to talk a little bit about Bamboo Lab's P1P to P1S upgrade kit, which they were nice enough to send me so I could see what the experience was of moving from a P1P to a P1S. First of all, let me talk about the P1S. It is a significant upgrade over the P1S. P1P without being very expensive. For less than $200, you get a full enclosure for the P1P, and that gives you the ability to print lots of different filaments. It also gives you a part cooling fan if you didn't already get that as part of the upgrade program that came with the original P1P, and it gives you an activated carbon filter. I love the P1S, and I think it's a perfect balance of price and performance. And so if you're looking for a new printer and you can afford a little bit more than the P1P, I really recommend taking a look at the P1S. Even if the P1S isn't something that you need for high temperature filament printing, the fact that the P1S P1S has an enclosure means it's a lot quieter and it also means that if you have a print that fails and shoots some spaghetti all over it doesn't go all over your work area which I like. The glass top that comes with it also makes a really nice place for the AMS system if you're using one of those. I have mine off to the side so I don't have to move it if I need to lift the top off or something but it's great if you want to stack everything on top of the machine. If you like quick guides like this please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below it really helps out the channel. I really, really recommend the P1S. If you can afford the little difference, go for the P1S instead of the P1P. Now let me talk about the P1S upgrade. I've seen a lot of people setting up the P1S. They take it out of the box 15 minutes later, they're up and running, right? The P1S upgrade though is unbelievably complicated and it's a particularly bad experience considering how great of an experience Bamboo Lab setup is to begin with. The P1S upgrade comes with a ton of parts. It's got the glass door and the glass top. It has the sides. It has a new back. There's a cable chain that you should install before you do the P1S. There's a lot of parts in there. Unfortunately, all of the parts require unscrewing just about everything in the P1P and then putting the new fixtures on. But the problem is that the guide that's on Bamboo's site actually leaves out some steps and some information. And there's also a 3D printed part that you have to print before you do the upgrade, which holds the accessory fan in place. I get the idea of using a 3D printed part for your 3D printer. I don't have a problem with that. But the problem with that is that it doesn't really mention that until you get into the middle. It talks about the 3D printed part, but when you get to step like seven or eight, it's like now insert the 3D printed part. And if you didn't already print that 3D part, now you've got to stop your upgrade and print out a part, which is really difficult because parts are all over the place. I thought the upgrade was going to take me a couple of hours. I ended up doing it over the course of several days. I would do a little bit. I get really frustrated. I would stop doing it. I would do a little bit more. I get really frustrated. So here's my advice to you. If you have a P1P and you want the P1S and you don't mind spending a lot of time and working your way through the upgrade, the upgrade is a great path for you. If you have a P1P and you can afford a second printer, you can afford a P1S, I would really recommend getting that as a second printer. And if you can't exactly afford one, I would even suggest selling your P1P and getting a P1S instead of doing the P1S upgrade. Now again, there are some people who have no problem putting them together. If you like doing IKEA furniture, you're going to be fine with this. Just keep in mind, it takes a lot longer than you think it's going to take, and your printer is going to be out of commission until you're done. Let me know in the comments below what you're printing with and what do you think about the P1S. Okay, those are my quick thoughts about the P1S upgrade kit. For Dave Tries List, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.